okay so let's try to make something practical based uh, on what we saw before um, we want to think and design a uh, an API for our database or simple database of exams okay so imagine we have this information here that we already work with uh, a table with code name CFU date and score we already <coughs> know that uh, too well and hmm? um, what kind of operations do we want to support on this uh, uh, database and uh, how do we want to map them so this is the first uh, question what kind of uh, we are creating a server just for managing this kind of information S the react uh, application will have all the interface uh, everything else and we will learn how to integrate them in the next week uh, but for now uh, the question is what kind of operations should the react application ask what kind of data manipulation operations should it ask Okay, so uh, the first step is uh, that of design, uh, designing the set uh, of, uh, uh, let's say, API, let me call uh, API design, dot md, for example. Mm -hmm. So, uh, the, the operation that we want to support the operation we want to support is to get the list of exams, retrieve the list of all exams. Uh, maybe with full details, with a subset of details. I don't know. We must decide. We don't have too many details here, so maybe we can uh, retrieve all of them. Hmm? Then we can retrieve the details of a single exam, given what? It's code. That may be another interesting operation. Maybe if we already retrieve the full details uh, in the list, uh, maybe we don't need the second one. No, because already the, the client will have already all the information it needs. It doesn't need to retrieve a, a specific one. So uh, we may decide to implement it or not. Uh, the full the list of exams, uh, in a way, should be filtered. In, in, should be filtered or complete so do we want uh, the exams to be filtered according to some attributes so that we don't return them all of them we, all, we only return those that match the filter in that case the URL should contain some information about the filter itself to be applied in our case if, if the information are few we don't need to filter them we can return everything every time these are design choices. No? I put a question mark because it's something that we must de decide at this moment. And then we will define which APIs we want to implement. And that will be a contract between the server that needs to implement the functionality and the client uh, that may use it when it wants. Hmm? Um, okay, of course, another operation will be to add a new exam, a completely new exam with uh, a new code hmm? so a new code a new unique code this means that if they try to add an exam that already exists uh, it should give an error hmm? otherwise it will start the exams hmm? uh, and finally we could maybe want to update uh, an exam the information about an exam given its code maybe all information may be changed 
or we may have a, more, a stricter API that says only maybe the date and the score can be changed. Hmm? We decide. By default, uh, we are in, in this way, we are sort of giving full access to the exam table to whoever is calling this API. So first of all, try to list uh, the, the, um, the operations that we want. And of course we are similar, we are thinking in a similar way to this table here. These are the five, let's say, main logical operations. But then we add details. Okay, the list, uh, okay, the list of what? Or which, which details do we want to retrieve? Which items do we want to retrieve? All of them, just subset, uh, the recent ones, uh, and so on. Uh, we add the creating a new exam should respect some rules. There should be some mandatory elements, so you can, can, I cannot create an exam without the name, for example. And so it's some validation that I need to apply to the values of the element and also some uh, cross checks about uh, the code that should be unique uh, compared to the others uh, and so on. So we are adding over this abstract information, we, we add some specific choices that we make uh, for our, um, for our uh, application. So uh, if I'm thinking about the front end that we had uh, last week, uh, we had uh, the add operation, okay, when the front end has all the information from the form for adding a new exam, it, in, it may call an API for that, for adding it uh, to the back end. Retrieving the full list, uh, yeah. Uh, this one is not needed because the application, the React, in our uh, React application, we are assuming that we already have the full list. Uh, so we will never need uh, to get information about a specific exam. And uh, the delete, delete, we may are missing that. Because update is needed when we do the edit operation in the front end. And so delete information about one specific exam. Giving the code. So this is what, what we want to achieve. How do we want to achieve it? Or well, we try to map them by using regular URIs and uh, HTTP methods. So the last one we already have here will be something like delete. We are using the delete verb in HTTP. And then will be something like exams uh, uh, and then the code. Let me write uh, exam code. We use the same syntax uh, no? that we have in a um, in, um, in Express to specify that the second parameter will, is, a uh, is a dynamic parameter that will contain, that needs to contain an exam code. So we should implement this. Hmm? And uh, for adding a new exam, uh, we should implement probably a post into exams. And the post body will be the JSON of a new exam the request body. The response body, none, we don't need it. Or error code. If something goes wrong in the body, I want the description of the error. In the case of deleting an exam, again, the request body is uh, empty. Once we have the code, we have everything we need to know. And the, re uh, the response body also will be empty. Or the other code. If something went wrong. Hmm? Uh, retrieve, so we can decide uh, with, with full details uh, and complete, which is the easiest one. So in this case, we'll have a get exams. The request body 
is empty because it's a get, the response body will be an array of, of exam objects in JSON, encoded in JSON. In this case, all the resources, all the entities are already about the exam because we only have one table. If we have more than one, we would have maybe slash students, uh, slash uh, degrees, or whatever. So this is a very simple one. Hmm? Uh, in practice, probably we don't want to mount our API directly, un directly under the root of the website. So usually we should have some prefix like, uh, I don't know, usually they suggest uh, you to use API and uh, a version number. So having a common prefix uh, to all of these uh, um, makes it easy to evolve the, first of all, uh, we have an API so that we don't mix uh, maybe the normal behavior of the website uh, with the backend. And then we have versioning number so that if we are changing or evolving some of the API, we can have another exam, example, like maybe version two, that gives us more information or less information, and we don't touch the old one until we are sure that all the clients are using the new one. Okay, so we may have different versions of the same API that coexist at the same time. Especially when we change the format of the objects uh, uh, by you know, changing the structure, it's better to keep them separated. Always try to a bit plan for the future. Okay, so we will have a prefix uh, like this. Uh, I'm adding this prefix uh, to all my. Okay, so let's implement some of them. We are in a project that uh, uh, the project is still empty here. So yeah, I need to create uh, the, the, the node modules, so npm init. No, sorry. Index.js. Yes. And I need to install, npm install, well, uh, express, of course. SQLite, uh, the JS, maybe we can add Morgan to have the, the logging, and if something else, we will add it later. Okay, so we can start uh, working on our index.js on our website. Uh, this is a use script, an express application. So we const express equal to uh, require express const app uh, express. Does not run app dot listen three thousand and uh, okay. So now we need to write the routes. So let's implement. Uh, the easiest one, which the, no, is not the easiest one, but is the least uh, um, less da least dangerous, the get. This one. Get API v1 exams. Sorry. So we are we need to implement a get of a URL. 
file that is called API. We are, okay, we don't want to repeat it, so we are in JavaScript, so const prefix is API D1. So we want to plus, uh, um, what was that, uh, uh, exams. Get slash exams. And what do we need to do here? So request response function we should run a query on the server on the database sorry and uh, uh, return uh, an object uh, formatted in json okay on the response running the query i have here i have this file uh, dao.js here uh, that is already exporting a, a method read exams uh, that we wrote in week number three a long time ago that is just querying all the exams and creating a list of uh, objects uh, exam objects i can I, wa I may want to reuse this okay so read exams is in the module dao dao stands for that access uh, object so it's a uh, normal pattern that we use for accessing databases, we need uh, to import it. DAO is import DAO. And we, when we import this module, require, when we import this module, the database is opened because you see that the call to the database opening is outside any function, so it will be executed when we load the module. So we'll open database at this point, and then I have these functions available under the DAO object. So here I can call DAO dot um, read exams. And it doesn't need any parameters. Read exams uh, returns a promise. It doesn't return the value. It doesn't return the array. Okay, the array will be after the promise is returned. So, how can we do that? Uh, we can. Uh, we have two choices. We can do an await, or we can do is the old syntax for promises with then. Okay, so. The simplest way is doing a then and a catch. So this promise may resolve, be resolved, or rejected. If it's resolved, we execute the then. If it's uh, rejected, we execute the catch. If it's uh, resolved, it will be resolved with the value that we need to return. So it will be a callback with a value, and we do something with this value. Otherwise, if it's rejected, we get uh, in the rejection, we have an error message, and we do something with that error message. Uh, the value is the array of, uh, of exam objects. So we can just convert that into JSON and return. That's already the result we need. So we could do a, not return, but send, uh, JSON response. Send a JSON response. So instead of using the send method, we use the JSON method that already converts it and set the headers of the value. This concludes the call. 
okay, conclude this call, the HTTP call. I am calling JSON, so the response is packaged and sent back to the client. In the other branch, uh, I have an error, so I need to send an error code, so maybe set the status uh, of uh, 500, internal error, and then send, or again, the error, well, I don't remember whether the error was uh, an object or a message. It's a message probably, so we can send it. Or, okay, let's, let's return always a JSON object, it's easier. With the error as an object. So what I'm doing here is constructing an object with a property error whose value is uh, the error code that we receive from the database. And then returning the JSON in the body of the response with a status code that will tell me that something went wrong, so I need to check the error. Yes? Uh, the def oh yeah, the code, uh, the, the, code, the status uh, by default is 200. Okay. Uh, 200 is, everything is okay. If I don't change it by default, it's 200. Hmm? So let's see if it works. For see for checking whether it's wor it's working, we can we should start the server, and it doesn't start because module not found which one. I ah, can find module DAO, sorry. Ah, stupid, because it's not DAO, but it's point slash DAO. Uh, because otherwise it will look for a module in node modules. By default it will look, we search in node modules. If I want to import a local module, I should specify which is, that is local, okay? Okay, now it started. How to test it? Well, uh, I think that uh, there's one nice uh, extension in, um, in Visual Studio, which is called, very simple, but uh, uh, quite effective, which is called, yeah, it's, yeah, it's here, sorry, REST client. Uh, these are very simple ex extension. You can install that from the, you know, the extension list. And how does it work? It can let you create uh, some files that contain the uh, URI that you want to, the HTTP request that you want to make. Uh, it's very easy to use because once you have installed it, uh, you can just uh, create a new file with the HTTP extension. So for example, test.test or API, API test dot http any name dot http and you can write here the URIs that they want to test so just like that get api uh, v1 exam i don't know hmm? it's wrong because it's missing an s okay when i write something with the http uh, extension uh, it will uh, uh, automatically add these links, send request, just above my text. If I click on send request, oh, sorry, localhost 3000, hmm? of course. Um, the full request, it will be sent and it will give me the response, response header and response body. It will not render any HTML, it's not a browser. No, I'm seeing the raw message that is actually what I want to see. And of course, in this case, it will tell me that uh, 404 not found, 
cannot get API v1 exam and it's normal because the URL is not called uh, exam but it's called exams so with the S at the end okay so let's write let's put the S click on send request again and this is what we get the response that we just generated okay we have the 200 response because we went to the JSON part uh, content type application JSON what was added automatically by the response.json method and then here we have the representation of our object you see that we have all the attributes uh, for the data attribute it was converted to a string so it was calling the string uh, serializer of the JSON of the JJS object so we won't have we don't have the JJS object anymore here we just have a string because JSON cannot contain objects uh, let's say native objects and here we will see the, the the structure of this JSON is a list an array of object then object then object and every object has a property and this property may be strings or numbers so it's doing the right thing if we make an error just try to see what happens if there's something wrong okay we cannot uh, on the server maybe we we make an error in the query so no okay what happens when you try to execute something like that when I send a request I will get the error 500 which I sent with the status so the promise was rejected so I went to the other path setting the status and returning again a JSON file with an error object with a, an object that has an error property whose value is the error object generated by SQLite so here we have the error code which is not very explicative here uh, we should try to seek uh, whether there's a, some way of getting some real error message and put it there mm, so that the user of this API could understand okay in this case it's 500 because the for sure is the server's fault no? the 400 500 calls are the errors that are caused by the server if an error is caused by the server it means that the client can do nothing about it because the server is not running so in this case the, the query is wrong the 400 errors are meant for errors in the browser in the client the client made a wrong request to the wrong address with the wrong parameters with the wrong type of data with invalid data and so the client could correct the error by changing its request so this is the the, the main um, in this case we have an api with no parameters so it could never be the client fault and so that's why I, ch I chose a 500 there okay let's go back to the correct version and see what is still running okay this uh, um, HTTP file may contain more than one request we can just separate them with the three hashes and you can have something else uh, I don't know we see each of them when I start to write get or post this link appears uh, send request and request and they are independent and I could also add after the request name some header and also some body an empty line and the body of the request so I can really compose the HTTP request to send and then you can click on send it will be sent and they see the response on, on site so it's very basic very simple but at least we it's very transparent huh, what we are doing so the second uh, uh, API that we may want to test uh, is the creation of a new exam so how in this case in, in our plan we want to post uh, this one 
post API v1 exams uh, with the JSON body of new exam uh, and uh, you shouldn't expect uh, an, uh, an error, uh, a response body unless we have an error. So we may start in this time from, from the test, actually. So we may we want to post on the same URL as before. So the URL is the same. If I do a get, I retrieve the list. If I do a post, I, I'm creating a new exam. The, the body of the request should contain the description of an exam. So I can maybe copy this part of the body and put it here. Of course, I need to change. So this is the body that will be sent. Uh, I need to change the code. Maybe put some value which is, we can recognize which is only a testing value. And with the date, uh, maybe it's today, 2022-05-10. And uh, for this to be a valid request, uh, we should at least specify that the content type uh, of the body is JSON. Okay, so we should set an header, content type, application JSON. So that the client, which in, in this case is here, will um, tell the server how to decode the request body. So we want now the server to be able to respond to this uh, address and so we need to create a new route for handling the post method at the prefix plus exams URL request response Okay, to insert the exams, we should first uh, create uh, the exam object or an object that resembles an exam. And the information about this object is here in the request body. So we should be able to extract this from the request. Let's try to see what we have. And then, sorry, but uh, we are just trying and debugging, but uh, we should not uh, forget to, to close uh, the request, okay? Just to understand how to extract information from the request body. So if I'm saving this and I try to execute this query, I get, uh, of course, an empty response, but there was... Uh, what I wanted by design. But the problem is that when I printed the request.body, I got undefined. Huh? The reason is that the body is not populated by default uh, unless we set a middleware for doing that work. So remember, we had one middleware that we needed, we mentioned, what is that, sorry. No, this is not this file, it's the other file. But it's the Express JSON middleware. No, okay, again, it's the other file that I just told you. So, yeah. No. 
express.json middleware is needed to be able to parse the actual response body into a JSON object, from JSON into a, a real object. Okay, so we need to register this middleware. So let's go back to the top of the code. We created the application and we register the uh, express.json, right? Express.json middleware. And it's not working because I'm missing a letter in the right place. Hmm? So if I try again this request, I still have zero. Uh, okay, no response, of course. But uh, you see that uh, the console.log of request.body returns this object. So right now the body is it's not a string, it's already an object. So this is just a serialization of the object done by, um, uh, by the console, hmm? by node. In fact, if I try to extract uh, maybe the code, we see that it's uh, available as a property. Uh, it's just the code here, for example. Okay, so right now we have been able to receive the request body describing the object that we need to add. Let's assume there are no errors that we don't, we can do some validation here if, if we want. Checking the values are valid and so on. And in the wrong case, we, we should return an error code. But if everything is right, we try to add that to the database. So let's do the, the lucky part first. For example, in my DAO, I already have um, a method, a function that is called the add exam that expects to receive an object with these properties, code, name, CFU, date, and score. Code, name, CFU, date, and score are the same name of the properties. We used uh, this function at exam with an exam with an, with an object uh, of type exam created by the constructor function exam. Right now, this is not an exam object. It's just an object that happens to have the same properties. It's just a, a plain object. But since the properties are the same, it should work. Or not? Yes, it should. We hope. Otherwise, we need to create an object by with, by calling the creator function. And maybe you know, maybe the um, the name of the properties are different, and so on. We must create exactly the same kind of parameter that this function expects. So either we correct the DAO function or we correct the the caller. Hmm? But in this case, I expect a request.body to be actually my exam. Maybe to more more explicit. Uh, the exam that you want to add is request.body. If it isn't, we need to, to make it so, so to change, to extract, uh, and to reconstruct the right type of object. And so if everything is okay, we can call add exam with this exam object. Again, this is a promise, returns a promise, okay? A promise with nothing useful if it succeeds and with an error message if uh, it fails. Uh, um, what we can do just for, for showing the other syntax, uh, we try to use the await in this case. Okay, so we have uh, the value the return value can be called by awaiting from this uh, uh, function. We see that uh, when, as soon as write a rate, I get a syntax error because await can only be used from inside a sync function. So I should declare my event tender as an async function. So that they can use a wait inside. 
this value is something that I don't care and after I get this value I can just return response dot end you are done thank you I just close the request the client will get a 200 error code and will understand that everything was right. And if something went wrong, how can I catch this error? With the normal try block. So when, using, when we are using the await syntax, the, the reject path will be translated into an exception. So we're trying to catch normally an exception why except uh, try what's in JavaScript catch thank you um, catch uh, the exception and we say what we want to what's that okay we say one well, of course if we have an error we should return an error message so again response in this case uh, it's a generic client error let's say 400 it's your fault that you sent me the right the wrong data probably and then respond with a JSON object uh, error E or something like that. Uh, like that. So we either use uh, dang and catch or use try and uh, catch syntax for the try catch block if we have more complex operations to do usually using the await blocks uh, it's uh, easier hmm? uh, of course just just a comment uh, in both cases the execution of the JSON method here or the end method there is uh, totally asynchronous we are doing the the get in a we are receiving a get in one moment and then later on after the database work and so on sooner or later in this call in the callback of the callback so we are in this callback inside that other callback we will finally call the JSON method for closing the response okay so in the meantime the browser is waiting and sometimes later the response will arrive this means that in the in the meantime the server is able to respond to other uh, requests it may receive other requests from the same browser or from different browsers then they will go they all go in parallel in a way okay one uh, one request may be is working on the database another request may respond more quickly because it only has some uh, so uh, the execution of this uh, mm, API endpoint is not atomic, okay? It will happen in several stages. First I receive it, then I process it, then I send to the database, I wait for the database to respond and so on, and finally I respond. So we must be careful that data should not change in the meantime or should be aware of what can be changed or not. In this case, there's no big problem because every API only executes one query, which is atomic by definition. In the database level, we are not messing things up. Okay, so let's see if it works. I'm not sure, but let's try together to run this post request. So I expect this to succeed. Oh, I don't know, maybe it succeeded or not. It told me it, everything was okay. There was no body, response body because nothing, no, nobody was expected. Uh, let's see if we can reload this table. Yeah. 
I'm just picking at the database itself, I see that the new data is there. And of course, if I call again the get API in the long list, I should also see our new friend. Okay. And if I try this post a second time, I get an error because I try to add another exam with the same uh, code. And in the database, I have a primary key constraint on that column. So the database itself rejected that query. I had an, ex an error at the ins uh, during the execution of the insert statement that I'm, of course, transferring to the client to do something about. If I were nicer, I would probably uh, there's some error codes that are easy to understand, easier to understand to the client because, you know, the client is somebody working in React. It doesn't know, it doesn't know anything about uh, how I structured information in my database. Hmm? So having SQLite constraint, what is SQLite anyway? I'm a React developer. I don't see, SQL, I don't speak SQLite. Okay, uh, maybe if I should get a since the server knows that it could create an error message saying okay if the error code is the sqlite constraint then i will create an error message saying uh, uh, um, for example duplicate code not allowed or something like that something that the client could do something about or, or the client developer can understand hmm? but that would be that would mean that in my design of the api i should also design the error codes not just the template uh, for when something is okay or something is wrong, but also the template for uh, when something is wrong, what kind of error codes I'm generating and so on. Hmm? It's a full API, like you are de developing a library and you're telling, the, uh, documenting what happens with your functions. The difference is that these functions are not JavaScript functions, are just uh, HTTP endpoints that can be called. Hmm? Okay. Um, and basically, uh, all the server development code is uh, variations around this. Of course, we'll have a more validation. Have a look at the validation library, it's quite very easy to use. Uh, because uh, then in the server, validating in the server is basically easier than validating in the client. Because when you are validating something in the client in a form and something is not valid, then you need to decide, oh, do I need to show an error message? Where do I need to show it and how how do I make it appear or disappear and so on? There's a lot of details. In the server where something is invalid, you just reject it. You create maybe an error code and then you re refuse to process it. So you don't need to handle with being nice uh, in, on the interface where something is not valid. So it will be easier to handle and uh, one more reason to do it, especially on the server. If you forget to validate something on the browser, okay. If you forget to validate something on the server, you, you will inject uh, wrong data into your database uh, and there's nothing worse. Hmm? Okay, um, and I, I say a lot of, of this work on the server side is basically adapting this kind of templates, okay? Um, Okay, we didn't implement uh, any API with the parameters. Uh, we can do that uh, next time uh, when we have something more. Uh, let's say when for the uh, post, uh, the, no, no parameters are needed. Only with the delete. Okay, when we implement the delete, uh, we will need uh, to play with the parameters. Okay, it's not for today because the time is over. And uh, I try to summarize with these slides here basically the patterns that we have. Okay, uh, getting a list of elements uh, means uh, a get on a collection URI. And inside, uh, what we do is to query the database for a list of elements uh, and uh, on the then branch, on the good branch, uh, we just return the JSON for that. Post is what we did. We extract the body, we validate it, uh, and of course, we need to use the expert.json to be able to access the body and then call the database. 
Uh, this is wrong because it forgot to close the response. Uh, there should be a response not end uh, or send something here. I, need to, I will correct the slide. And here, here an example of a, of, a, of a get with some specific calls. So we have a parameter query, a, um, a parametric query, and inside the code, of course, we extract from the params attribute the specific code, and we do something with that code. Maybe a get, maybe a delete. So this is more or less the pattern that we always follow. Okay. Next week, uh, we'll learn how to call these functions from the React front end. Have a nice week.